Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine Chakra. I am the founder of Your Lock Muse, but I also love all things content creation. And I do all of this while being somebody's mama. So today I would like to talk about working through slow sales and what that actually looks like and what you should do when you realize that your sales are starting to pick up. How do you continue on with that momentum? So if you have not watched my previous video, um, I have talked about going through slow periods as a business owner. I started my business in April of 2022. I have had months where I've gotten 270 orders. I've had months where I've turned around and only gotten 70 orders. And I know for some businesses, 70 orders still is a lot of orders, but I just want to put things into perspective that no matter where you are in your business journey, no matter what industry you are in, there is going to be a slow season. There is going to be more than one slow season. Your slow season could be a month. It could last seven months. But how do you work through that? What do you do when you're finally feeling like you're reaching the end? How do you take that momentum and how do you build off of that? That is what we're going to talk about in today's video. All right, so I have my iPad right here because I want to talk about the things that I do when I am in a slow period and when I'm in a green period. So I call my green periods um, when things are going the way that I would like for them to go. So first things first, when I'm in a slow season, there are three things that I like to focus on. Number one, I want to actually define what the slow season is. So everybody's definition and everybody's slow season is going to be different based on what you are used to experiencing in your business and in your industry. So the way that I like to define a slow season is is it that I'm experiencing low orders or am I experiencing a low order average value? And if you, let's say you're a service-based business, the way that you could define your slow season is, am I um, experiencing low returning customers? Am I experiencing um, low new clients or new customers? Um, or, Am I experiencing a period where um, maybe they are booking, but they're not booking add-on services? So those are some things that you um, would look at when you are actually trying to define what your slow season is. The last um, six to seven months, my low season, my slow season was due to low order. So I was not hitting my, um, my goal every month weekly is 35 orders a week um so you can do the math on what that adds up to and i was not meeting that so i defined it as i was going through a slow season specifically because my orders were low so once we have defined for ourselves what our slow season is in our business now we want to go to what i like to do is my step two i like to focus on um, analyzing data and the data that I focus on is three things, Shopify, Klaviyo, and my social media accounts. I use Shopify for my product-based business. And within Shopify's analytics, I look, I look at the sales, my online sessions, what my conversion rate is, and what the top products are. I am looking at the last 30 days as well as the last 90 days because that tells you a lot about what's going on in your business. I look at my analytics, child, I can't talk. I look at my analytics week to week, um, month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year, things like that. Clavio. I want to know what's going on with my sign up form. Um, am I having people new? people that come onto my website are they signing up to um get their first time order discount are they signing up to find out about new arrivals what is going on with the way that things are currently set up with my forms and what little small tweaks can i actually make to those forms the third thing that i like to look at is my social media what has it looked like um 
are people seeing my content? I go into Instagram and look at the professional dashboard, see what my reach is like. I look on TikTok. Don't get me started on TikTok, girl. But I get on TikTok um, and just read the data, see what it's saying. Are people following? Are they unfollowing? Are they engaging with the things that I'm posting? Are they engaging in stories? Are they coming and joining us on live? Another thing with reviewing your data in Shopify and Klaviyo, they work together. Um, if you have Shopify, you need Klaviyo. If you have a product-based business, you need to be on Shopify. And if you do any type of email marketing, baby, you need to be in Klaviyo. Point blank, period. I can't tell you any other way but to use Shopify if you have a product and Klaviyo if you do any type of email marketing. But what I want to talk about is Shopify conversions. If I realize that my conversion rate for orders, what that means is people are adding things to their cart, they're starting checkout, and then for whatever reason, if the conversion rate is low, that means they have started checkout, but they did not complete their checkout for whatever reason. If I notice that my conversion rate is low in Shopify, what I need to do then is go into Klaviyo and see what my conversion rate is like for my abandoned cart checkout and my um, product browse abandonment. If those are low, which they obviously would be low because if my conversion rate in Shopify is low, that means that the error may not necessarily be with anything I'm doing within the back end of Shopify, but it may be within my back end of Klaviyo. There's something that I need to tweak in my automations for my checkout abandonment. Maybe it's I'm sending them an email 45 minutes after they abandon their checkout and I should actually send it within 30 minutes. Maybe I'm only sending them one email reminder like, hey, you left something in your cart. When I, In actuality, I need to send them four. So these are the type of things that you want to look at and I will discuss in another video if you all would like for me to talk about what my automations are like because baby, my automations are thorough. Okay? <laughs> They're thorough. Um, so yeah, slow season. Let's go over it again. Number one, define what it is. Number two, you want to analyze your data. And then number three, you want to start prioritizing lead generation. Lead generation is using the traffic that you are receiving on social media and driving them to your website so that they are signing up for your emails. Once you have somebody's email or phone number, you need to nurture them. I nurture them with a welcome series. So they're going to get a series of emails from us. One is going to contain their first time order um, coupon. And then they're going to learn about who I am. They're going to learn about the business. They're going to learn about product recommendations. They're going to hear our reviews from our customers. We are nurturing these people. They're not going to come in and immediately say, you know what? That product looks so good. I'm about to order five of them right now. I'm going to check out. Everybody is not going to do that. Some people are, but not everybody. So we're going to prioritize getting those emails, getting those phone numbers. We're going to nurture them. Nurturing may take a few weeks. It may take a few months. We're going to talk about that in another video as well. Once our slow season is over, like I said, your slow season could last a month. It could last a quarter, it could last two quarters, it could last three quarters, and you could only have a good three months in the year. However long your slow season is, just know your green season is coming. When it does come, what are you going to do? That is the question. And I got some answers, because I know my shit. <laughs> All right, so three things, of course, because we're going to keep things short simple straight to the point when you are in your green season or when i am in my green season three things i like to focus on is operations customer journey and marketing now i don't want you to hear that i focus on marketing in my green season and think that i didn't focus on it in my slow season because i did focus on it in my slow season by reviewing my analytics tweaking what i needed to and focusing on lead generation now that we're on the other side of that now that things are starting to pick up, we defined or I define my slow season as low orders. Low orders for me would be a month where or months where I'm consistently getting less than 100 orders. Let's say I'm getting 70 orders 
and I'm noticing, okay, this month we didn't get 70 orders. We actually got 90. We still are not at that 100 mark, but we got a, a uptick of 20 orders. Let's, let's go back and review and let's figure out what that uptick is and how we can grow in this green season. So first things first, let's focus on our operations. Inventory management. That is so important. When you notice that your orders are picking up, you need to stop right then and there and see what your top products are and you need to figure out how you can sell more of it. If you are a service-based provider, if you're getting bookings for a specific service, you need to figure out how you can make time or how you can market that product, that service more so that you can continue to sell more of that service or sell more of that product. And you also want to be focusing on your efficiency. How efficient can I be with getting this product made or getting this product from my vendor and getting it out to my customers or um, getting these clients through this service. Customer journey. When you notice that things are picking up, you want to focus on retention. How do I get a first time customer to become a second time customer, client, whatever, third time, fourth time, fifth time? You can do this through loyalty programs or exclusive offers that you send to them via email. Hey, we noticed that you really loved yada, yada, yada. You loved booking this service. Or we noticed that you ordered this product, so we recommend getting it in this color or pairing it with this or um, you book this service with us, come back and book it again, but get this add on that will make this, you know, X, Y, and Z focus on exclusive offers that you don't necessarily post on social media, but you send out through emails to grow with your customer to retain them for a longer time period. You don't just want one time customers. You want people to come back, but you also need to tell people why they need to come back. You need to give them something, honestly. And then lastly, in my green season, I really, really, really honed down on my marketing, my social media campaigns. Right now, I am not quite there yet, but I know that I am getting ready to taper out of this slow season and I'm getting ready to go uphill into my green season. So what I have been doing is focusing a lot on content days. I have um, invited customers into my office. We've done, I think at this point, eight content days in January. And I've just been putting out fresh content. And when I have a content day, I focus on three things. So I have enough content to push for weeks. So I'm pushing that content. That content is going to bring in new leads. I'm going to nurture them. They're going to be they're going to become first time customers. Once they become first time customers, they're going to be put into a cycle of funnel where I am going to start to build that customer journey with them, continue to build it. And I'm going to retain them. I'm going to turn them into returning customers. It may take three months for them to come back. It may take a year. I've actually had a customer this week that she placed the order with us a year ago and she just came back a year later and plus placed the second order. Why? Because she is still receiving emails. She is still being nurtured. I don't know if she's following us on social media or not, but I do know I have her email and I do know that she has received emails of us nurturing. Um, so marketing, I'm focusing on my content really, really heavy so I can get their emails and I can tell them, hey, this is why our community loves us. This is why you should be a part of our community. And this is the solution that we have to your problem. So if you found this video valuable at any, at any point in the video, you found any type of valuable information, let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you would like for me to expand upon that I briefly touched over in this video. Let me know in the comments as well. And I will see you all on the next video. Bye.